Hello, Alex here, and in this video I want to round out the unofficial first season of this series by talking about the final step in the standard black and white negative development process. A washing aid. Specifically, Kodak PhotoFlow 200 and what you need to know about it in terms of safety, handling and disposal. This video was sponsored by the folks at thephotoshop.ie who have partnered with me for this educational video and video series. We'll talk more about them later, but for now, let's get into it. As always, I'm going to start this video off with a quick legal disclaimer and then a brief overview of how the video will go. The opinions expressed within this video are my professional opinions, but nevertheless just opinions and do not constitute legal advice on behalf of myself or the folks at thephotoshop.ie. Nothing I say in this video will supersede or overrule your local laws and if you have any basic questions, feel free to drop them in the comments down below, email me or send me an Instagram message, but for any pressing or more specific local matters, contact your city, council or other regulatory board. I'll start off by talking about what a, a washing aid does and why you would use one, then we'll talk about safety, handling, disposal and of course cost, and at each point I will give Kodak PhotoFlow 200 a score out of 3, and then we'll tally those up at the end. So why would you use a washing aid in the first place? Similarly to how when you wash your house windows or your car windows or whatever with just water, sometimes you end up with water spots or streaks along the glass. The same thing can happen with film. This is caused by the surface tension of the water causing it to bead up and stick to itself and then slowly evaporate from the outside in leaving a stain as that mark which will be like a, a droplet that's moving causing a streak or just if it stays in place a circle that slowly shrinks as it evaporates leaving some kind of a residue or a general watermark behind. A washing aid does two things. The first is that it reduces the surface tension of the water making it harder for the water to stick to itself and bead up so it's more easily spread out as a film. Yeah I think that's a fair way to put it. And the second thing is that it will make the actual film or glass if you're washing a window with an appropriate product hydrophobic to a degree meaning the water doesn't stick to it and will just kind of slide off. So this means that you can dry your film or your plate because you can use these for plates just as easily as films uh, without getting any water spots or marks. Uh, even if your water is fantastic, my tap water is annoyingly good. For the purposes of making this video I tried deliberately to get some crappy negatives, just old negatives, wash them in water and try and get streaks on them and I can't. So generally that's great, for this video not so good. But even if your water is absolutely fantastic or if you use distilled or deionized water, the use of a washing aid will reduce the drying time of your film by quite a bit. On a warm day I can get my negatives bone dry and I mean dry enough to stick them in a plastic sleeve without any sticking or adhesion whatsoever about 10 or 12 minutes on a warm day then on a cold day maybe 15 to 18. Like it makes a huge difference so if throughput is important to you even if you don't get streaks just using water yeah a washing aid might be worth considering. Washing aids like Kodak PhotoFlow or Ilfotol wash aid I think that's what it's called are typically only used for about 30 seconds you pretty much just dunk your plate or your film in there and you don't really agitate it because you don't want to generate too much foam which inhibits the actual surface contact of the surfactants with the film or the plate and makes them just not work as well and so they're very quick to use but you typically only use them with black and white film or plates you don't really use them with color film where you're generally expected to use a stabilizer now some people do use a, a photo flow a wetting agent instead of a stabilizer because there is some debate online about whether or not modern color films include some sort of stabilizing component within the film itself. Uh, I'm just putting it out there that some people do that but you know maybe in terms of like decades long archival it's not as good as using a dedicated stabilizer. But I guess if you lost your stabilizer or something happened you could get away with this at a push. Chemically it's very simple, there are two ingredients plus water. The first is propylene glycol, a non-toxic surfactant which is mainly used to prevent the water beating up. This is the stuff they use in vape juice, it's fine, don't worry about this, and it's there at about 25-30% to 30 of the final mixture. The other ingredient is this thing, commonly sold in the biological world under the name Triton X100, and it's just a non-ionic detergent. 
Other wedding agents will probably have slightly different formulas, but it's probably going to be pretty similar overall. Something to disrupt the surface tension of the water, something to make the film hydrophobic, and maybe both of those things do a little bit of both of those tasks. That surfactant is present in about 5-10% to of the final solution, the rest is just probably distilled or at least decently high quality water. Kodak released PhotoFlow as PhotoFlow 200, 600 and 2100 and these tell you the dilution ratios because 2100 is about 10.5 times more concentrated than 200 is, 600 is 3 times as much. This is basically just because if you were to use 2100 for a roll of 35mm film you would need to reasonably accurately weigh out 0.14 milliliters of the solution. Not really practical in a kind of home sense for most people. So just go with the 200, it's not going to make much of a difference. And it's actually a little bit less hazardous than the more concentrated solutions anyway, so whatever. In this case, it means you use PhotoFlow 200 at a ratio of not 1 plus 200, but actually 200 plus 1. Because you want to add the stock washing aid to water and not the other way around like you would when you're making up your fixer or your developer. Because doing it that way, adding the water to the wetting agent, can cause excess foaming, wasting some of the surfactant and just generally inhibiting the ability of the solution to work in any capacity. At 1 plus 200 or 200 plus 1, you're looking at about 1.5 mils of the stock concentrate to fully coat, I guess, or treat a roll of 35 millimeter film and about 2.5 mils to do a roll of 120. At that ratio, you're talking somewhere in the region of 200 to 300 rolls out of a bottle. But it can be reused, and I reuse it quite strongly. I made a stock solution of about 1 is to 100, and I just top it up every so often, and when it gets a bit cruddy, I just throw it out maybe every 3 or 4 months. You don't have to use it one shot, but it's still very economical if you do. The main advantage of using the stronger stock solution in my case is that I can use the 1 litre at full strength, or near full strength, um, in a 3 reel Patterson tank to treat sheet film. So I can do 2 or 4 sheets, without needing to, you know, do any kind of rotary nonsense with a very small amount of the full strength solution. I just pour it out, reuse it later. In that case, you're looking at probably a couple of thousand rolls out of a bottle, not a few hundred. So it's, it's very, it goes a long way. The stock solution will last pretty much forever, probably the better part of a century, being perfectly honest. Uh, the working solution though, Kodak say, you know, if you're not using it one shot, you should probably replace it every week or so. I'd say that's fine in a professional environment. You know, you do want to keep things free of algal growth or any kind of maybe mold that might grow in there in a huge tank in a lab setting. I throw mine out every three or four months when it stops working as well. I've never had any mold or anything growing in mine, but it is perhaps worth noting that that could potentially happen. So the shelf life is probably, in my experience, longer than Kodak say, at least on a home scale, but depending on your purposes, you might have to replace it every few weeks or a month. There is an expiration date on the bottle, but realistically that's more of a legal requirement than any practical representation of the lifetime of the product. In terms of safety, I did notice that, curiously, the bottle bears the corrosive GHS symbol, but the SDS only has the warning irritant symbol. So there is a bit of a mismatch there in terms of what they're telling you. I would err on the side of what the bottle says in this case because although propylene glycol is pretty much completely non-toxic in reasonable you know volumes and quantities, certainly this kind of amount, the uh, Triton X100 surfactant whose name I can read but I'm not going to try and get it on this first take of this little clip, it's pretty nasty. It can cause eye damage, it can cause you know very light skin damage, like irritation rather than like corrosive corrosive but it is quite bad for your eyes especially it's not something you want to get in there if you do get into your eyes rinse them extremely thoroughly maybe wear glasses or safety specs of some sort if you're concerned about that because if you do foam it up a lot those bubbles could pop and release micro droplets into the air maybe it's theoretically possible that that could cause eye irritation in those tiny amounts it's not something I would really worry about because I have actually gotten a tiny little droplet in my eyes before. My eye got a bit red, it was okay, but it, you know, it, it's still worth bearing in mind that there is a risk of hazard to your eyes if you get it in them. So it's not the best, it's not completely harmless, but it's not like we're talking about a developer solution that is significantly more dangerous and risky than something like this. 
The first aid section is all pretty boilerplate with nothing you wouldn't expect to see in an SDS. The main thing is just that if you get it in your eyes, do wash them out extremely thoroughly with warm but not hot water and try and get your contact lenses out if you're wearing contacts and if it's safe and comfortable to do so. It's better if you can, not the end of the world if you can't. Don't scratch your eyes trying to get them out if anything like that happens. When it comes to accidental release, again, there's nothing really to say. Even on an industrial scale, a small spill is not something to worry about. If you spill some, wipe it up with a bit of tissue, throw the tissue in the bin, or if you spill it on the floor, you can mop it up and put it down the drain. It's okay. Additionally, if you're working with this stuff one shot and you're repeatedly opening the bottle of the sock concentrate, you're exposing yourself to the more concentrated solution more often. Whereas by making up a relatively concentrated working solution that I replace every few months, I open this bottle a few times a year and I'm exposing myself to the stronger solution much less frequently. The stuff down there is about 1% the strength of the stuff up here on the table. So for these reasons, I'm gonna give it two out of three for safety. Like I said, it's not completely harmless, but it's nothing like a developer solution. The main risk is from the stock concentrate and not the working solutions that you're working with. However, if you do make up a working solution, then you're really not exposing yourself to it that often and the risks become much smaller just by reducing the frequency of exposure. Even then, it's not that bad, but it's not completely harmless, so it can't get a three out of three. Don't drink it, keep it out of your eyes, Pretty common sense for anything to do with chemicals of any sort, especially the stuff you'd be keeping in your dark room. Section seven and 10 are pretty bog standard as well. Keep it away from your eyes, keep it away from incompatible materials, which basically just means strong oxidizing agents. So if you're doing a lot of reversal processing, keep it away from your potassium permanganate, your dichromates, or your comically large barrel of industrial strength hydrogen peroxide. Realistically, section seven and 10 say nothing that's really relevant to us. So for handling, I'm probably gonna give it a three out of three. The only thing you really need to consider for handling specifically is just not to agitate it so you don't over froth it and make it ineffective by making you know bubbles everywhere when you're actually using the stuff. It's fine. It won't tell you like something like a stop bath when it's actually effectively depleted if you're reusing a stock solution. But the only consequence of that is having to spend another 30 seconds rewashing it and the time of like dunking it in there and hanging your film or plate back up again. So there are, in practical terms, no consequences to using this stuff after it's depleted or weakened. So yeah, it's not really a concern, even if there is no indicator to tell you when it's no longer at its kind of optimum strength. For disposal, an easy three out of three. The working solution goes down the drain, don't even think about it. The stock concentrate, I would be hesitant to pour down the drain if I had to get rid of some. What I would do is actually just dilute it up, maybe in multiple portions over multiple days to the required strength, one plus 200 in this case, or one plus whatever for the other photo flows or whatever your own wash aid is, and get rid of it in portions. That way you're just reducing or eliminating the risk of causing a giant like frothing disaster with foam coming out of every drain in your house, like in a sitcom, you know. It's probably not gonna happen, but realistically, disposal, not a concern. At about eight euros 50 for a bottle of almost half a liter, which will fully treat somewhere in the region of 200 to four-ish thousand rolls of film, depending on what strength you use it at and how or if you reuse it. Yeah, it's a fraction of a cent per roll. Why wouldn't you use it? Three out of three, no questions asked. Before I go and tally up the scores, I do of course need to give a massive shout out to the folks at thephotoshop.ie for again sponsoring this video through this entire run of a hypothetical development session. We've talked about a developer, a stop bath, a fixer, a hypo clearing agent, and now a wash aid. So you get a vague idea of approximately the level of danger and consideration you would need to have for each step of the black and white development process if you've watched all these videos so far. We're not stopping here and there will be a lot more, including some that I don't want to spoil just yet. But yeah, huge thanks and shout out to the folks over there. Their catalog is always growing and they're just an absolute pleasure to deal with. I recently picked up a box of FP4 in 4x5 because I want to start branching out from Fomapan into more higher quality, more um, interesting sheet films for some of the stuff that I have planned in the future. I picked it up from them because it was cheaper than it was to import it from somewhere in the EU 
And you know, four by five is relatively hard to come by in your local shops in Ireland. So I'm extremely grateful for them and the selection that they offer to the Irish analog community. If you wanna check them out, the link to their website will be down below. And now let's tally up the scores. So Kodak PhotoFlow 200 got a two out of three for safety, a three out of three for handling, three out of three for disposal, and three out of three for cost for a total score of 11 out of 12. Your wash aid is one of the more innocuous parts of the development process, so it really does make sense that it would rank very highly, but nevertheless, it's good to throw it in the table and maybe down the line we'll compare it to a different wash aid and see if there's any significant difference between brands. To conclude, Kodak PhotoFlow 200, or wash aids in general, make your film dry much more quickly and much more consistently with a significant reduction in marks and streaks on the film from water. There's really no reason not to use one because it takes very little time and costs almost nothing per roll or per sheet. Realistically, if you aren't using one, you should very strongly consider using one. And I don't mean this in the way that I said about hypo clearing agent where there are quite a few of you who will benefit, but not the majority of you. I'm not saying that if you don't use a wedding agent and you start to, your life will be changed forever in a revolutionary way, but it will have a few small impacts for very little effort and cost that just make the whole process a lot smoother. So if you don't use one, you really should consider it very strongly. That's gonna be it for this video and for season one of Safety Handling and Disposal. Stay safe and bye-bye for now. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at shaka1277 for new pictures every day. If you like this video and enjoy what I do on the channel, please consider subscribing or checking out my Patreon where the tiers start at just one euro per month.